Welcome to our review on tobacco and alcohol. So first one we're going to consider here then is tobacco. So tobacco itself comes from leaves of the tobacco plant and it's used these days in the production of a whole range of different products. So cigarettes, cigars, the tobacco you put in pipes, etc. Now, if we consider our cigarettes, when we're actually burning this tobacco, we're going to be releasing four important chemicals that we need to remember for our exam. Carbon monoxide, tar, nicotine and particulates, which are basically small particles in the air. Now, one of the things that we do know that's associated with smoking tobacco is lung cancer. But one thing to bear in mind is that it's not like if you smoke a cigarette today, you're going to develop lung cancer tomorrow. It can take around 30 years in some cases for the lung cancer to actually develop. If we consider those four chemicals in slightly more detail now, first of all, if we think about carbon monoxide, now, carbon monoxide is a gas, and what's going to happen is it's going to bind to your hemoglobin in the red blood cells. And as it does so, it reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of your blood. As a result of that, your heart has to work harder, which contributes to heart disease. And if you happen to be pregnant while you're smoking, then what's going to happen is because you've got less oxygen available in your blood, less oxygen is actually going to get to the developing fetus. So that's going to result in the baby that's being born having a much lower birth mass. Tar's our second substance we need to consider, and this is an irritant and it's also carcinogenic. And carcinogenic means it's been linked to causing cancer. And the way it's actually going to do this is by damaging the cells. Now, in addition to obviously causing cancer, it can also damage these special cells that we've got lining our respiratory system called the ciliated epithelial cells. Now they've got little tiny hair-like structures called cilia on the surface that normally wave to waft the mucus out so it doesn't accumulate. However, with the tar, it actually damages those ciliated epithelial cells and therefore they're not able to do this, which means we get a build-up or an accumulation of mucus. And that's what gives smokers that really distinctive hacking cough. The particulates then will accumulate in the lung tissue and then as a result of this, our white blood cells come in, they ingest them and the problem there is that they then release an enzyme that can lead to damaging our little alveoli, which are the air sacs in our lungs, and that causes a condition called emphysema. The last one is nicotine, which is the addictive substance in them, and that's what makes it very hard to give up smoking once you've started. And this will actually increase the heart rate because it's a stimulant. And then what we'll find there is, again, the links to high blood pressure and heart disease. Next up, we're going to look at alcohol then. So alcohol, as we've already heard, is a depressant and some people can become dependent on alcohol. Now, one of the things that we're starting to see more and more of these days is this idea of binge drinking. So that's where throughout the week you may not drink anything, but then as soon as it comes to the weekend, you go out and you drink incredibly large quantities of alcohol. And that can be especially harmful to us. If we consider the short term effects of alcohol, first of all, if you consume alcohol, then you may well experience blurred vision. You might have the impaired speech, so slurring your words. You might have impaired judgment and confusion. Your reaction times are going to increase. You may have impaired balance and muscle control. You might lose your ability to control yourself as well, so lose your self-control. Some people do become violent and then demonstrate that aggressive behavior when they've been drinking. You might just feel very tired and drowsy. If you drink quite a large amount of alcohol, you are also at risk of becoming unconscious and slipping into a coma. And in addition to all that, you also get this increased blood flow to your skin. So it gives you that nice warm feeling on the outside. But as a result of that, your core body temperature is at risk of dropping. The long-term effects are quite serious in some of these cases. So what we can actually see then is you can develop what's called cirrhosis of the liver. So this is basically where your liver cells are becoming very damaged and therefore your liver is not able to work properly. You can also experience brain damage, which will lead to potentially loss of memory and depression. If people who are pregnant are drinking, then what we could see there is damage to the fetus. So you can actually get these alcohol syndromes in our fetuses, which are very unpleasant. 
slightly less serious one, in some cases anyway, is that you can gain weight. You will also develop what's called a fatty liver, which again impairs its function. You've got an increased risk of developing diabetes and heart disease, and also an increased risk of developing cancer of your liver, mouth, throat and esophagus. Because of these short-term effects of alcohol, then we actually do have legal limits on what alcohol you can have in your actual bloodstream and also on your breath for when you're operating either a car or for pilots as well as planes. And the reason behind these is because you are at a much greater risk of having an accident after drinking alcohol because your reaction times are faster and your judgment is impaired. So what we'll find is that police will carry out breathalyzer tests on people that they suspect have been drinking before they get behind the wheel of a car. And obviously, if you are found to be over the legal limit, then there are serious penalties associated with that.